Welcome back to Hard Knocks Games YouTube channel. Continuing our weathering series on this printable scenery dwarf tower. As promised, today we're gonna apply some moss to the uh, different levels to make this, you know, look like it's been grown over, been out in the woods a little while, or the mountain pass, or wherever the hell it's at. This is a real easy technique. Most of you have probably tried this or done this that have built any kind of terrain that, you know, cause it just makes sense to do. So if anybody's been in an old stone building or been up in New England and seen like old stone, you know, fences or barns or anything like that, that, uh, you know, they get a lot of vines or moss or things growing up in between the, the gaps in the stones and the rocks. So that's basically the effect we're gonna go for here. And uh, I'm gonna use my trusty um, conglomerate hobby flock overflow bin here to uh, get my moss effect from. This is just a mixture of different flocks that we've used on model bases and things here in the shop or for different projects. So this is not any one particular color of grass. You can see we got some fall leaves mixed in there. There's some red flowers. There's all kinds of shit in here. Um, you wouldn't want to use this like if you're trying to do like a consistent army look or something neat because it is a whole bunch of bull mixed in here. But for doing terrain, it's great. Waste not, want not, right? You know, I mean, recycling was all a lie, but hey, we can recycle on our own. Gonna use some Wolverine PVA glue from AK Interactive. Uh, you can use any kind of PVA glue for this. Um, tacky glue from the hobby store works really well. Comes in the big gold bottle, makes you feel like you're doing arts and crafts in kindergarten again. But uh, it's basically all the same stuff. I just really like this because it says Wolverine on it. And it, you know, if you haven't been able to notice, I'm an AK and ammo brand whore. I'm not loyal to, to either one, really. I just like that, uh, I like their sweet, sweet product lines. Get you a shit brush you don't care about. Um, I'm using some really bad testers uh, brushes that you find at Walmart in their hobby aisle. Don't ever use these to paint your models. These are the worst brushes, hands down. Use a Q-tip for God's sakes before you use these things. These are, these are awful. But what they are really good for is spreading glue. So if you're doing basing work or anything like that, you can use these to spread the glue on. I'm sure some botanist or somebody who deals a lot with landscaping or plants could tell me that I'm putting my moss in the wrong place that they would only grow in these particular things or light or whatever. But for your project, you put that shit wherever you feel like. So we're gonna put some, uh, some spots of glue down here to do our moss deposits. And you know, this is kind of a, you know, this is your taste. Where do you feel like the moss would grow? So I'm just gonna put a couple spots in here. And then I'm gonna take my project box. And this is just a cheap, 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 cheap Tupperware container. Uh, I think you can get these off the internet, like hundreds of them for like 10 bucks. But uh, they're really great for this kind of work. So you just get generous with your, with your moss. And then we flip it upside down, tap off our excess. And then we got some moss deposits or some wild grass, you know, house plants will die, giving them specific light and everything else. But them weeds out growing in the concrete cracks of your driveway, they live through anything. And that's basically what's going on here is you got weeds and moss or whatever growing in this castle, growing up on the rocks. We got some stuck leaves in there. Like it got caught from the, the fall. It's why I like using a mix like this because you get that mix of coloration in the moss. And like, we've got like a stuck leaf over here from like some fall leaves that might've come into it. And uh, it just looks a little more, you know, realistic. I mean, as realistic as a dwarven castle with red trim looks, even though it's just byproduct. So this is neat. So we're gonna continue this process and make it look like there's like some vineage growing up the side of this building. So this is your bottom floor. We'll make our vine act like it's following the crevice of this rock face. Cause they do like to root. I know that about plants is they like to have like a root base and they really like to grow inside of gaps and bricks and concrete when they do it. That's how they hold on. So same thing. And when you're doing this, just, just plop it on there. Being messy is your friend. 
We tap it off, do a reapply to fill in any of the gaps that you can see the glue through, tamp it. And there we go. The PVA glue dries clear. So even if you got a little PVA glue showing through, like you can see a little bit of the white through, you won't see that once this is dry because it is clear. It's just like your, it's just like a thicker version of your Elmer's school glue. And in a pinch, uh, you can use uh, Elmer's school glue for this kind of thing. I just don't because I like the PVA glue because it sticks and it sets up a little quicker. I know there's some super glues that don't dry clear. Like if you use uh, the, the uh, Gap Filler AK Black, it actually is black when it dries, so don't use that. Also, I don't recommend using super glue for these applications because the CA, the cyanoacrylic glues, the super glues will actually oftentimes discolor this flock it'll turn it white i don't know what does it in it but it's almost it's like a bleaching powdering effect uh we've seen it on guys who have tried to like do basing flock on their soup on their on their bases and then they just all the the green grass turns white and crusty looking from the ca some chemist can probably tell me what does it but i just know it does it so don't use it uh for this purpose also, it's really expensive to do super glue for stuff like this. Just use the, the PVA glue and a little patience and it goes a long way. Um, next video, I'll do these trap doors to put in it and I'll uh, show you how to make these hinged on the, the way the 3D printable scenery works for making hinges. It's really neat because it prints the gaps in here for you to actually put like a, a piece of hinge material through it so that your door can open and close. But we'll do that next time. Anyway, thanks for stopping in. Bye.